What's up guys, Eber here with Hurricane X, and I've been using the GTX 1080 Ti ever since launch, and one of the concerns I mentioned in my review video was regarding the core temperatures during load. As you may know, the reference cooler design wasn't really doing its trick cooling the monster inside. Uh, even though Pascal architecture is efficient, the GP102 core is massive and it outputs a lot of heat. As you can see, I ran the 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra on a loop for 15 minutes, and the maximum I was able to achieve was around 83C. Remember, NVIDIA's boost algorithms will start modulating core frequencies uh, when the core reaches an operating temperature of around 84C. Now, this is why a lot of people end up leaning towards custom GPUs, since board partners will add new PCBs, uh, RGB lighting, premium backplates, uh, and other exclusive features that might attract gamers. Uh, in my case, I was a little uncomfortable with attempts on this reference card, uh, but most importantly, sometimes I found its clock speeds to be wandering a bit. Uh, and I decided to do something about it, but before we move on, a quick message from our sponsor. You can only rely on the pro to do the job, with every keystroke satisfying like the millions before it. Quality feel with every key, regardless of your space. Cooler Master Master Keys Pro, take it with you, make it yours. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you are aware of custom aftermarket GPU brackets uh, that can be used to mount an AIO on top of the GPU core. Uh, Corsair, Thermaltake, and many others have launched them in the past. Uh, some of them even include blower style fans for the VRMs, uh, but the downside to all of this is A, it's gonna cost you more, especially when you include the cost of the EIO cooler, and B, it might be a little overwhelming for some of you to install this cooling solution. Now, today we're taking a look at the new NZXT Kraken G12 GPU bracket. It's priced at $30, and you can pick it up either in black or white variants. The installation procedure is also supposed to be a lot easier than its predecessor, the G10, and it's compatible with more than 30 AIO coolers on the market, so not just NZXT's models. This is because, like many other manufacturers, NZXT uses Acetec as an OEM, so mounting compatibility remains identical across many different models. Compatibility with modern GPUs shouldn't be a problem, uh, since the G12 supports both NVIDIA and AMD's current offerings, including the Titan XP and the RX 580. Now remember, you have to purchase your own cooler of choice, uh, provided that you've checked the compatibility list uh, on their website. In my case, I'm gonna mount this hot new Kraken X42 from NZXT. It's priced at $130, so in total, you're looking at an investment of $160 USD without any taxes, just for the sake of better temperatures and perhaps higher frequencies. That's a lot more than what you would pay for a custom GPU. But um, without any further ado, let's proceed with the teardown process. A few moments later. So I've run into a little bit of a problem here. NVIDIA has done a pretty interesting job. Well, I guess it's a little bit more complicated than I expected, but you first need to remove the backplates in order to, you know, for the first initial teardown process, which I did by removing these screws that are right here, super tiny screws. And um, unfortunately, they're actually uh, mounted on top of these hex screws uh, for the cooler. So I don't actually have a compatible hex screw remover. And so I'm gonna head out to the dollar store or the nearest hardware store and come back to um, tear down this whole thing because it's, I need to do this today. So yeah. Success, so I did find a four millimeter driver. It works. So yeah, I'm gonna get this kit and uh, go back home. Let's do this guys. All right, I have to mention a few things before revealing the results. You see, mounting a GPU with the AIO cooler can be a little bit challenging, especially inside compact cases. 
Uh, mind you, I'm using the X42 cooler from NZXT that comes with a 140 millimeter radiator. Um, and take this S340 case from NZXT for instance. This chassis has a lot of restraints when it comes to mounting a radiator, especially when you're using a 240 or 280 millimeter AIO for your processor. I even tried mounting the radiator at the top and the rear, but unfortunately the VRM heatsinks on the motherboard was getting in the way. So to provide an apples to apples comparison, I chose the Be Quiet Silent Base 800 chassis to mount two liquid coolers, one for the CPU and one for the GPU. Also, make sure to reuse the thermal pads that come with your stock cooler, as I ran into a lot of hiccups without installing them in the first place. Uh, most of them were mostly BSODs, but um, NZXT, if you're taking notes, please include extra pads uh, in your next revision. Anyways, enough of me complaining, let's roll out those results. And as you can see, these numbers speak for themselves. The X42 does a killer job cooling the GP102 core, providing idle temps around 27C, and there's about an eight degree difference between it and the stock cooler, which might not be a lot, but moving on to low temps, I ran the Unigen Valley test on a loop for 15 minutes, and once again, the X42 did a fantastic job giving us temps in the high 60s, which is way better than 85C on the stock cooler. I also noticed that there wasn't a drastic difference with core frequencies. Uh, in this case, with the AIO, the max I was able to achieve without any tweaking was 1885 megahertz compared to 1873 with the reference cooler. Another interesting aspect that I noticed while testing both coolers was the internal temperatures. As you can see, the temps spiked up to about 50C with the G12 compared to 40C with the reference cooler. And I think I might have the justification for that. You see, I had the 140mm radiator mounted at the front as an intake, and given the thickness of the rad plus the intake fans drawing hot air into the case, uh, it was just a matter of time for the temperatures to spike up inside the case uh, compared to a setup where you don't have any radiators at the front uh, and just a stock cooler from NVIDIA. Once again, these results may vary depending on where you decide to mount the radiator inside your case, provided you have the room to mount one in the first place. Now let's take a listen to how they sound. So guys, the GPU is installed inside the Silent Base 800. Uh, I have the side panels closed, so it's a more real-world scenario that we're looking at right now. Uh, the microphone is right above the frame, it's right here. And uh, let's take a listen to how it sounds uh, during idle. So guys, I've swapped out the NZXT G12 bracket and I've reinstalled the uh, Phantoms Edition cooler. I've also reapplied the thermal paste uh, to give you sort of an apples to apples comparison. Uh, so in terms of airflow, I did replace the radiator fans. Uh, I did remove the radiator in the front and I replaced it with the uh, NZXT uh, fan that came with the radiator. Uh, so we have front intake just like before. So let's take a look at how the system sounds under idle. So, conclusion time. This was my first experience tearing down an entire GPU and sticking in an aftermarket cooling solution on top of the core. Uh, in this case, I used the Kraken G12 and the X42 cooler. It was definitely interesting. I had a few hiccups. Obviously, the first one was the case restrictions that I had. I tried mounting this on the S340. It didn't work out, so I had to choose the Silent Base 800, which was a much bigger case. So make sure you have proper room to accommodate uh, the radiator. In fact, this whole setup, because it's definitely a little intriguing. The next thing to consider is the cost associated when you try to approach the solution, because albeit, it is not cheap. It's definitely expensive. Uh, for me, at least, it would cost around $160 as an add-on. So I would highly recommend picking up an aftermarket custom card from brands like EVGA, ASUS, Gigabyte, you name it. Also, there are other things to consider like cable management because uh, pump connectors, fan connectors, they all require some sort of uh, skills to make it look non-existent, especially inside a case, uh, if you have a tempered glass or a window. I also had to sacrifice my front IO connectors because the MSI board that I tested this whole setup with uh, came with two USB 2.0 headers inside the motherboard. One was for the X62 uh, cooler for the CPU, and the other one was for the X42 cooler 
um, for the GPU. And so you need to keep in mind, make sure you have proper uh, USB 2.0 headers or enough USB 2.0 headers to incorporate front IO and two pumps, especially when you're using the NZXT series. I'm not really sure what the deal is with other AIO coolers, but uh, you need to seriously consider this as um, a challenge or find a workaround to this. So there you have it. I want to hear your thoughts about the NZXT Kraken G12. And is it even worth spending $160 or uh, even less, depending on which AIO solution you choose to liquid cool your GPU if it's running super hot? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'm Ebro with Harwick Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.